Steam locomotives in miniature at the Steam Workshop, Part 1, working on 5-inch gauge locomotive that requires some minor adjustments. Purely by chance, I'm located between Blackgate's Engineering and Steam Workshop, both of which are about the same distance away from my house. Model Steam Workshop buy and sell and refurbish miniature steam locomotives to a very high standard. This is a steam locomotive before it's gone through the workshop, and they test everything very thoroughly. I do the same sort of thing, but on a much smaller scale. I work from home in my double-length garage, where a steam workshop uses an industrial unit and everything is on a larger scale, including this traction engine. Simon Hudson, who is the managing director of Steam Workshop, asked me if I'd like to come in one or two days a week and join this small group of talented people who work on these engines. I didn't need twice telling. I thought, yes, I think I would enjoy this, so here we are. It's January 2018 and it's very cold out here, so I'm going inside to have a look. I feel a little bit like a kid in a candy store or a child in a sweet shop in the UK. Look at this. It's an absolutely beautifully made 5-inch gauge example of a sterling single from the former Great Northern Railway. Just look at the quality of this. It's a thing of great beauty. And to the right of the sterling single is a narrow gauge engine. This one's nearly completed. It just needs the handrails fitting and some smaller safety valves. So I wonder which of these beautiful engines I'll be working on first. Will it be this 9F under the duvet to the left of me? Maybe it's time to get my Barco adjustable spanner out of my toolbox. But then again, next to that is a sweet pea. I built one of these a few years ago, although I did stretch my version to 7.25 inch gauge so it went around my garden railway. I was building a sweet William, but I felt that was a bit too big because I couldn't move it. So I just built a stretch sweet pea instead. So, what am I going to be working on? I wonder what it's going to be. Will it be the part finished locomotive behind the sweet pea? Er, uh, no. I seem to have got the short straw. I'm working on this. This is a 5 inch gauge engine called a Chub. A Chub is the 040 version of a Butch. A Butch is an 060 type locomotive. And for any viewers who are not familiar with the technical terms, 040 refers to the wheel arrangement. Zero, four, zero. Four wheels in the middle of the locomotive. 060, same thing. Zero, no wheels at the front. Six refers to the six wheels in the middle, and the second zero refers to the absence of any wheels behind the main driving wheels. The first day I went to work at the steam workshop, this engine was looking very forlorn, sat in a corner on its wheels. I didn't take the camera in on the first day because there wasn't much to see, just a lot of chiselling off of very tiny rusty bolts and very carefully dismantling all the parts and putting them in these boxes. The first box contains the suspension parts, this second box contains all the steam fittings that are removed from the engine, and the third box contains the valve gear. And this valve gear is incredibly rusty, I'm going to have to do quite a lot of work to clean it up. The rod that drives the expansion link, which is connected to this return crank, has a ball race in the middle. This is always a good idea on miniature steam locomotives because this return crank would soon wear out a plain phosphor bronze bush. And then there's the boiler. This is just the boiler wrapper obviously, it's a steel wrapper and it's quite rusty. This is the state of the boiler after the first application of commercial paint stripper. We didn't use the normal one, nitromores, because that's very aggressive and very nasty and it burns your fingers. This stuff's a little bit gentler. My shoe, I'm not making a big habit of touching it in any shape, way or form. You notice that I'm handling the boiler by the dome, which doesn't have any paint stripper on it. Paint that's been applied to model steam locomotive boiler wrappers can be difficult to remove because over the years it really has been baked onto the metal. So the clip currently on screen shows me applying a second coat of this paint remover. Before the engine was dismantled, the boiler was given a hydraulic test in the frames to make sure it was OK. And as everything was fine, that's why Simon gave the job to me as a restoration project. Anyone watching this video could be forgiven for thinking, well, I wouldn't bother with this, it's horrible. Well, yeah, it is horrible. But the point is, it's a well-made bit of horrible steam engine. The main problem with this engine, and it's very common, is that it's been stored in a damp environment. Hence all the rust that needs to be removed. I'm using a file and some emery cloth. I'm using two grades of this emery cloth. One of them is 100 grit for the first part of the rust removal process, followed by 180 grit for a finer finish. This job takes many hours. I've speeded up the video and I haven't showed all the footage. It really does take a long time because you can't be too brutal on it 
and you have to be very careful not to round the edges. This was the first part that I attacked with the emery cloth, and I was just seeing how long it was going to take, and whether it was actually practical to do it this way. And after doing a little bit more cleaning up, you can see the difference. Spot the one that's been cleaned. Quite a long way to go yet. Working for someone is a very new and novel experience for me. I did have a job once when I was 16, I was an apprentice, and it was terrible, I hated it. The apprenticeship that I had was as an electronics engineer, because I've always been interested in electronics, but instead they stuck me in the machine shop drilling lots and lots of holes in pieces of metal. And when I complained about this, saying, look, I didn't come here to drill holes in pieces of metal, I got the answer in a Yorkshire dialect that went something like this, now then, lad, there's got to serve the time in the machine shop. And roughly translated, that means, now then, young man, you have to serve your time in the machine shop. And as a 16-year-old, I couldn't get my head round this at all, so I left. And I remember like it was yesterday being called into the managing director's office after I handed my notice in, and the managing director sat in his big chair. Well, we're sorry to hear that you're leaving, but all employees have to serve the time in the machine shop. What are you going to do now instead of this? So I turned round and said to him, I'm going to be a professional musician. And he said, oh yes, really, what do you play? I said, I play organ. And to my surprise, the managing director said, well, for your information, I'm an organist and it's a very competitive business. How long have you been playing? I said, well, I started about a month ago. And the look on his face said it all. He just wrote me off as an idiot, which is always a mistake with me. So as time went on, I took piano lessons, became a musician, and I ended up working with some quite well-known people in show business. Then I opened my recording studio, and I'm still a musician to this day. Oh, and the managing director, he went bankrupt, apparently. So why have I told you that story? What's that got to do with steam engines and steam workshop? Well, the point is, it's a bit like being an apprentice again. I'm waiting for one of the team to come up and ask me to go to the shop for a tin of striped paint and a bucket of steam. I couldn't clamp the parts very securely in this vice because I didn't want to mark them with the jaws. So what I did was I got two pieces of brass and hammered them over like this, not a precision part, and very important if you do this, always remove the sharp corners. I used a linisher for this. A linisher is a belt sander, but the one in the steam workshop is the proper thing. It's a vertical one. So now I can clamp the rods a little bit tighter in the vice, which is better. And once again, I'm securely holding the piece of emery cloth against the file and then cleaning up the part as though I'm filing it. And you can get a surprising degree of accuracy with a file if you practice. But I wouldn't want to use the file on its own because it would really score the surface. And then apart from removing the rust, I would have to use the emery cloth to remove all the marks left by the file. So there's no need to do this. It's really horrible though, isn't it? I mean, look at the state of this thing. I'm using a suitable lubricant for this job, and a suitable lubricant is WD-40, and that's what I keep spraying onto the work. It flushes away the particles of rust and makes it so that the sandpaper cuts much better. I'm not going to show too much more of this because it's driving me mad watching it. I remember doing it for a lot longer than the video is running. So now for a bit of diversity, I've rotated the coupling rod in the vise, and now I'm cleaning up the round end part just using my finger and a piece of emery cloth. This entire job is an exercise in patience. It has to be done. The coupling rods are in quite good condition underneath all the grime and the rust. But if I make a mistake and round the wrong part, it's not going to look good. So I'm being very careful. It's a situation where you can't go onto autopilot. You have to watch what you're doing every step of the way. For the last part of this sequence, I'm going to put the video footage into overdrive, running at 800%. And now, ta-da! We have a couple of coupling rods, a couple of coupling rods. Who wrote this script? Well, no one actually, I just do this live, I don't use a script. By now the paint stripper should have worked its magic on the boiler. So now it's over to the cleaning area of the steam workshop, which is in one of the corners. I'm using a handheld steam cleaner, and this is really good for getting rid of all the paint stripper residue, followed by any more loose flaky bits of paint. So once I get rid of the paint stripper using the steam cleaner, I then apply a good coat of degreaser to the boiler, all over it, on the wrapper, on the back head and the tube plate. I'm also using the steam cleaner to clean inside the firebox. After this initial cleaning with the steam cleaner, 
I'm going to apply a second coat of degreaser because the steam cleaner tends to spread the grease a little bit. I left the degreaser on the parts for quite a while while I had my dinner and then I came back and blasted it off and now it's starting to look much better. Again this is quite a labour intensive job and plenty of patience is required. Time to bring the wire brush into play now to get rid of some of the rust. Once again I've shortened the video sequence otherwise it's going to be far too long. It takes a while does this, it's not a quick process at all. But it has to be done. There's a stand that has to be maintained. I always try and give it my best shot at everything that I do and this is no exception. It would be very easy to say, well look it's only a little 040, that will do. It's not exactly a Britannia is it? But it's not the point, it has to be done correctly. There's a bit of a fine line between doing the job correctly and being pedantic. I need to get on with the job. So I'll put the video on a very high speed for this last part of the sequence. That's about it for this video. Before I go though, I'd just like to say my thanks go to Simon, Dave and John for their help and infinite patience as initially I didn't know where they kept all the tools etc. And that's it for this first episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.